Welcome to another Amazing Adventure program. Our series is called Amazing Adventure, A Journey for Life with Jesus. And we're just delighted that you're back here. We've been having a good time over the last, let's see, this is our third presentation. And of course, we want to remind our friends who are joining us about the study guides, the Amazing Adventure study guides. If you'd like to learn more about the study guides, please visit the Amazing Facts website. And you'll be able to find out how you can obtain a, a whole set of these fascinating study guides that go along with each of our programs. Uh, have you kids enjoyed the set, what we have up here? Isn't that kind of neat? We've got the, the ship theme, and of course, what's the name of our, of our ship? HMS, HMS Adventure. Adventure. That's the name, and we've been going on an adventure seeking Bible truth, and we want to thank all of those who helped to make the set possible, and also partnering with 3ABN. You know, it's about 11 years ago that we did our first Amazing Adventure series in Texas, and we worked with 3ABN, and it's nice to be able to work with them again right here in Michigan for the new Amazing Adventure series. Now, one of the things that stayed the same is our theme song. And we've been singing our theme song, Life is an Adventure. And we'd like to invite Pastor Doug to come forward as well as our singers as we get ready to sing our theme song. All right, now hopefully you all remember the words. Let's stand and we're going to be singing together Life is an Adventure. Life is an adventure following the King. Every day with Jesus makes us want to sing. Walking in the Spirit. following the King. Every day with Jesus makes us want to sing. Conquering with kindness everywhere we go. Voices we are raising, Jesus we are praising. Life is so amazing, following the King. Life is so For leading us in our song, and please be seated, children. Good evening, Pastor Doug. Good Ready evening. Ready for another adventure. I am. Welcome on board, everybody. Now, before we get started, we have a couple of volunteers that's going to come help with our scripture reading and our prayer. So I'd like to ask Carissa to make her way to the front. Carissa is 10 from Michigan, and she's going to be doing our scripture reading. And Malachi, why don't you come up? You're going to be doing our prayer. So our scripture reading, let me grab the mic, is going to be John chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Okay, thank you. And the prayer, Malachi. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can be here at Amazing Adventure and that we can draw closer to you. And thank you for camp meeting too. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Now, each night I think we get a few questions that come we in. We do, and we got some good questions that's coming from a couple of countries. Of course, we have in the U.S., but we also have some from the Philippines, I understand, and I think there's one from India as well. So I think we're ready for our questions, if they want to put that on the screen. Hi, my name is Sophie, and I live in Tecate, Baja California, Mexico. And my question is, is the world really going to end? All right, so the question from Mexico, is the world really going to end? Well, that ties in with our subject tonight. It does perfectly. Well, God had a plan when he made the world. He made a paradise for Adam and Eve and their descendants, and he wanted it to last forever. But the devil came. We learned last night he invaded our world. He kidnapped the planet. Jesus came, and he bought back the world, those who accept him. And the Bible says he's going to make a new heavens and a new earth. So the world the way it is now will end, 
But God is going to make the world over again, fresh, perfect, and we have a lesson that's going to talk about that. But yeah, it's, this world, the way it's going now, is not going to last, and we'll talk about some of the signs that the Bible gives us in our program tonight. Okay, and our next video question we have? Hi, my name is Victoria. I'm 10 years old and I'm from New Jersey. My question is, how can I deal with my anxiety and trust God when there's so many scary and bad things happening? All right, how does a person trust God when there's so many bad things happening in the world? Well, that would scare me. It looks like she was driving while she asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> how, how can you trust God? Well, you know, it says in the Bible in Psalm 23, Yes, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. God told Moses, I will be with you. Do not be afraid. God told Joshua, be very courageous. I am with you. God told Jacob, I will be with you and bring you back to the land again. God always keeps his promise. What did Jesus say when he went to heaven? I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So if Jesus is with us, do we need to be afraid? You know, I grew up, I think I told you, Part of my life I lived in New York City and it was a dangerous city back then. It was probably more dangerous than it is today. And sometimes kids would get mugged and, and things would get stolen. You could get robbed. It wasn't always very safe. But I had a big friend that went to school with me. And when I walked to school with my big friend, I wasn't very afraid. Well, Jesus is the biggest friend you can have. You have nothing to fear if you are with him and he is with you. Amen? Mm, amen. Our next question that we have. Hello, Pastor Doug. My name is Asher. I live in Jagan, India. And my question is, how do we know Jesus is coming again? All right. How do we know Jesus is coming again? Well, that kind of goes along with our study today. Yeah, if I answer his question shortly, then there'd be no need for me to do the lesson because the whole lesson tonight is how we know Jesus is coming again. And so we're going to answer that young man's question in our presentation tonight. Okay, and then we have our final video question for this evening. Hi, I'm Lucy, nine years old from Philippines. When I go to heaven, will I remain as a child? Okay, so the question is, do children stay children in heaven? Or what happens to them? Do they grow up? Well, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Malachi, it says that they shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stalls. It's talking about heaven in that verse. And so if there's a child in this life, when Jesus comes, if you're alive, when Jesus comes, you get a glorified eternal body, but it will be a youthful body. And when you get to heaven, you'll continue to learn and to grow up in heaven. Someone might ask the question, now, Grandma, when she died, she was 99 years old. She was a little bit wrinkly. Will Grandma be all wrinkly when she gets to heaven in, in her glorified body? I don't think so. I think everybody's going to have a perfectly mature, youthful body. There'll be no effects of aging. But children will grow up. You know some other verses that we know that there's children in heaven? It tells us that the child will play on the hole of a venomous serpent, and it will not hurt there's nothing. A child will lead a lion and a wolf in heaven. So are there children in heaven? There must be. In order, it says children will be playing in the streets thereof and laughing. So the Bible definitely tells us that there will be children in heaven. But you won't stay children forever. You'll continue to grow up until you reach perfect maturity. And then you'll continue to learn and to grow in your mind and your abilities forever. Now, Pastor Doug, isn't it true that there's even a verse in the Bible that seems to indicate that children in heaven will age a little slower than here on this earth? That's right. It says a child will die at 100 years. And some people think that means that children will die. It actually says they won't even cease to be children until they're 100. Have you read in Genesis? Some of the first patriarchs, when they got married, they waited till they were 100 before they got married. And so... You'll live forever, and so God's going to let us grow up longer. How many of you have had a puppy, and you really liked it as a puppy, but it seemed like it was just a few months it turned into a dog, <laughs> and you wish it could have been a puppy longer? Well, you'll get to enjoy your youth even longer in heaven. 
All right, well, that's it for our Bible questions for tonight. And again, I want to thank those who sent in their Bible questions. And also, we're going to be asking some of you throughout this week for your Bible questions. So I hope you're thinking of your question. All right, Pastor Doug, we'll turn the time thank over to you. Thank you very much, Pastor Ross. And we're, we're so glad that you're all here. I want to welcome our friends who may be watching online or television and our class here. It's, we have an exciting presentation tonight. At least it's really exciting for me. Our lesson tonight is called Journey Through the Stars. And we're going to be talking about taking one of the most incredible trips in the universe. Now we had a memory verse tonight, John 14, 3. Why don't you say that with me? Jesus said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. Jesus said, I will come again and take you to the places that I prepared. You know what that means? You need to get ready for space travel. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my dreams, I, I don't know what it is about me, but I, I always wanted to fly. My dad was a pilot. Brothers were pilots. When I was on snow skis, I always look for the jumps. When I'm on a motorcycle or on a quad, I like jumping. When I'm water skiing, I jump over the wake. I like the feeling of flying through the air. I've jumped out of an airplane with a parachute. I've jumped off a mountain with a hang glider. I love flying, but my dream, I want to go to space. Now there was a man, he had a dream to go to space. Dennis Anthony Tito. He was an engineer that made a lot of money. He made millions and millions of dollars through investments in the space industry. And he went to Nassau. He said, I want to go to space and you can give me some training as an astronaut and I'll do experiments. He said, no, you're not a professional astronaut. We're going to not talk to you. He kept saying, I want to go to space. I want to go to space. They wouldn't do it. So he went to the Russians who he did business with. The Russians, you know, we share the space station with them. The Russians are the one. We don't have a space shuttle anymore. You know how we get our astronauts to space? The Russians fly them back and forth in their Soyuz uh, rockets. And he went to the Russians. He said, I will give you $20 million for your space program if you'll let me go up to the space station for eight days before the spaceship returns. They said, $20 million? Okay. He became the first tourist to space. Now, does he look happy to you? He had to pay $20 million for admission, but he didn't care. It was his dream. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could buy a ticket to heaven? Somebody's bought that ticket for you. You and I can't afford it. You get to go on a trip, not just to the space station, but you get to go on a trip through the universe. Now, you know how big the universe is. This man just went to the space station. They're saying in a few years, you probably heard of Tesla cars, Elon Musk. He's got a sp company that's called SpaceX. They're developing a rocket called the Big Falcon Rocket. And that rocket, they say in about five years, it's going to be able to take tourists to the moon, go around the moon and back. You can't land on the moon. Just go around the moon once and come back. Would that be exciting? Yeah. To take a trip to the moon. And they say they think they can fit 100 people on the, on the rocket. Oh, I, I don't know if I'd ever be able to afford it. But I'd love to go to space. You know, they sent teachers to space. They sent all kinds of people. If you can write letters for me to NASA, tell them, send a pastor to space. I'd like to be that pastor. I would love to go. But I know I'm going to go someday. You know, when you think about space, it is so big. Even those who go to the moon or were planning a trip to Mars in a few years, that's not very far. You have not even left our neighborhood when you're in our solar system. Because space is so huge. We know now from the Hubble telescope that space is ginormous. It's immense. It's colossal. It's big. I can't find words for it. It's eternal. Let me give you an example. Right now, the most powerful telescope we have is the Hubble telescope. They took the Hubble telescope a few years ago. They aimed it at a piece of the sky where it was dark. You know, on a clear night, when you look up, you see a little cream of stars. It looks like stars sprinkled everywhere, but you can see a few dark spots. They said, we wonder what will happen if we focus the telescope for several months on the darkest place in the sky, what we will see. 
And they took a picture, and it was called the ultra deep field uh, of space. Here's a picture of it. It took them about 90 days. They focused the telescope up there, and they found 10,000 galaxies were in a little piece of sky as big as a piece of rice. Now let me get you to think about that. I'm going to back up my slides. Here's a picture of a galaxy. When you look at night and you see that galaxy, a sombrero galaxy or one of them, uh, it looks like a star. It actually has 200 billion suns, not million, 200 billion approximately stars are in that one dot. We used to think it was one star. It was actually a cluster, a spiral of 200 billion and it looks like if you fired a bullet in the middle of it, you'd hit something. It is so big and those planets are so far apart that if you fired a bullet right in the middle, you'd probably never hit anything. Space is so huge. You know, they're building a telescope now. It's called the James Webb Telescope. The shield of the telescope is as big as a tennis court. It's going to have the biggest mirror. It's going to be a hundred times more powerful. They think it'll be in operation about 2023. 100 times more powerful than the Hubble telescope. When you aim the telescope up and you see some of the nebula, beautiful colors and things up in space. They got this one. It's one of my favorite. They call it the God's Eye Nebula. Can you tell why? Doesn't that look a little bit like an eye? It's almost like God's up there with one eye looking down on us. But He is looking at us all the time, huh? How many of you would like to be able to go through space have you ever sung that song before, Rock of Ages? There's a verse in there that says, When I go to worlds unknown, see thee on thy judgment throne. We'll get to soar through space. The Bible says we will mount up with wings like eagles. We'll be able to fly. And you won't need a space suit. And you'll be able to fly faster than the speed of light. And light goes 186,000 miles a second. Well, I'm excited about, but, but the most important thing about going to space, it's not just all the wonders we'll see, it's the one that we will see, Jesus. So Jesus promised he's coming back. Let's look at question number one. Will Jesus really come back to earth again and take us to the stars, through the stars to heaven? What's his promise to us? In my Father's house are many mansions, I go to prepare a place for you. How many of you have a place prepared by God? He's got one for each one of you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Now, you know why he said again? Because Jesus came once already, didn't he? He came as our sacrifice. He's coming next time as our king. I will come again and receive you to myself that where you might be also. You know how the Bible ends? The Bible ends with a promise. He says, Behold, I'm coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work will be. Here's the important thing I want to impress tonight. It's in this question. How will Jesus come the second time? Why do we need to understand how Jesus will come? Do you know when Jesus came the first time, there were prophecies in the Bible that told all about his first coming? But most people were not ready for his first coming because they misunderstood the prophecies. When the wise men came riding on their camels and donkeys into Jerusalem, they said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? You would have thought the Jewish nation would have been all excited and looking for him. They were all... <clears throat> the Messiah, their Savior, came. And most of the nation was unaware, just a few shepherds. And Simon in the temple and a few people were looking for his coming because the devil had deceived them about how he was coming. You see, the Bible tells us Jesus would come the first time like a lamb, the second time like a lion. They thought he was coming the first time like a lion, and the second time like a lamb. <laughs> he came as a sacrifice quietly, meekly the first time. He's coming like a conquering king the second time. They got the prophecies mixed up and so they were deceived and many of them were not ready and many were lost because they didn't understand how he was coming. So do you want to know something about how the Lord's coming? You need to know because the devil's going to deceive a lot of people. When Jesus was brought up into heaven, he spoke to the disciples from the Mount of Olives. He blessed them, told them, go preach the gospel to the world. And while they watched, he was taken up 
and the clouds received him out of their sight. The Bible says, And behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. That's Acts 1.17. Who are these two men? Angels. Who said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here gazing into the heaven? When Jesus went up in the clouds, they just stood there. And they kept looking and looking. And the angels were suddenly there. And they said, Why do you keep gazing up into the heavens? This same Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come as you saw him go. He was real when he left. He's going to be real when he comes. He left in the clouds. He's going to come in the clouds. Now you might be wondering what those clouds are, huh? Some of you might be wondering, have you noticed our little clouds that we've got here? Yeah. You might be wondering about those. Could I get a couple of volunteers? <laughs> How would you like for me to give you a cloud tonight? I, got, I get two volunteers. Let me come down here. I'm gonna, I, I don't get deep enough into it. All right, I'll get a girl over here. Have you been up yet? All right, you can come on up. I got a boy here. All right, come on up. Pastor Ross is going to help me with this. We're going to get a cloud tube. And we're going to let you guys uh, get in the clouds. You've been wondering about these clouds that we've got during the program here. Uh, I know our stage is smoking. It is not dangerous smoke. But we're going to hook up. We're, we're going to let you guys find out what it feels like to go through the clouds. And then we'll talk about what kind of clouds Jesus is coming in. They've, they've turned the clouds on full steam for this little experiment. We've got to find a place to pull this apart. All right, well, you take that side. Get a good hold on it, both hands. You take this, what, what's your name? Gabriella. Kim, what? Gabriella. Gabriella, and your name? Jonathan. Jonathan, all right. Well, no. that way a bit. I was going to let her help pull. Okay. You, you probably help, you may need to help Jonathan pull that way. I wonder how long that thing will get. Now, don't fall off the stage. Could have a workman's comp claim. I want to help you? Here, let Pastor and I. We'll do tug of war. Okay. That was fun all by itself. All right. I'm going to let him hook that in now. You might have to go underneath the... Uh, <laughs> you can't see it. I can't see it. <laughs> it's right here somewhere. It's right here. Yeah. <laughs> No, it looks like it's coming out of the lights. It's not. When the, when the smog hits the... All right, let's see if this works. They tell me this is not cancer-causing. It's in. Now, you need, might need to wait a minute. Now, this stuff is actually a vapor, and they've got a machine in the back. We actually have about 25 elves that are in the back that are shoveling coal into the steamer. They're down in the basement... Uh, no, just kidding. Here's, here's. This is made out of steam. What are the clouds that Jesus is coming in? Are they clouds of vapor? No. What's the glory around Jesus when he comes? Don't worry, it'll come. Angels. The Bible tells us that he's coming. He was caught up into a cloud of angels. And it's the same cloud of angels. It's like the chariots of fire that took up Elijah. And he's coming back. All right, here you go. Well, it's, you know, it's, it, oh, look, it's all coming. Here it comes. There, now take a look. All right. It's, it's, it's a cloud. Have you ever flown through the clouds? I can't just wipe through it. It doesn't do anything. All right, well, there you go. I told you you could take a cloud with you. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> are going to make the whole set disappear. All right, that'll be good. Let's give them a hand. And you know what? We'll let you take that with you. I just thought you guys might be interested and curious. Some of you are seeing the steam. You're going, what's doing that? It's the steam machine out back. All right, let's get, let's get back to our lesson. So Jesus is not coming in clouds of vapor. He's, he's not coming in a fog machine. These are, it's clouds of glory and angels. Will we be able to see Jesus when he comes? Or is Christ coming secretly? Now, this is why it's so important to understand. Some churches teach that when Jesus comes, it's going to be a secret. That you'll be driving down the road with grandma. And if grandma's a Christian, and maybe you're not, grandma disappeared, and the car's going to run off the road. 
Or if you're in an airplane and the pilot's a Christian and some people aren't, the pilot disappears and the plane's going to start going on autopilot. They think that people are just going to disappear. Now, I believe, they call this the rapture, but they're usually talking about the secret rapture. Rapture means that we'll be caught up by the power of the Lord. But the rapture is not going to be a secret. People are going to see it. It says in the Bible, Therefore, if they say to you, He's in the desert, do not go out. Or look, He's in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For the Bible says, As lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. I need a volunteer. Okay, let's see here. I can come back down here. I know, I, I don't want to ignore the guys in the front, but I feel like I'm missing out. All right, young lady, you right here. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, I'll take two. Let's get a boy from over here. You haven't been up? Okay, I'll, since you asked, ask and you'll receive. Okay, you'll, don't. We got eight more meetings, so hang on. I right, look in the chest there, and one of you look, just get one thing. You're going to see something that looks like a black radar gun. Want to get that? Pull that out and bring it over here. That's, hey, don't worry about shutting it. That's okay. All right. Now, why don't you close your eyes? All right, do you trust me? Do you see something? I just saw uh, yellow. You saw yellow? Your eyes were closed. How did you see it? Because it went through my eyelids. It's so bright you could see it through your eyelids? <laughs> now I'm not sure if I can see again. <laughs> yeah, now you can't see again. All right, you want to take that and try it? Shine it for your friends out there. See if they, you guys all close your eyes. You can get them in the face. Try and get everybody. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Shine it. Let the camera see it. <laughs> Go ahead. Those, this group over here. Can you all see it? Oh, now she's, she's holding it down so it's strobing. This is called, uh, this is a hunting light. This is a mild one. They've got them that are so bright that if you put your hands over your eyes, and you close your eyes, you can still see it. Did you guys know that when there's real bright lightning, any, any of you ever been in a lightning storm and you're a little scared? And you close your eyes and you can put your head under your blanket and can you still tell when the lightning flashes? It's so bright. The brightest light that they had back then was lightning. And Jesus said, when He comes again, it'll be like lightning. What kind of lightning? It's lightning that shines from the east to the west. Did you all see that? The coming of the Lord is going to be that bright. Thank you very much. Let's give them a hand. Great. Appreciate that. Okay. What else? Everybody's going to see it when Jesus comes. You know, I'll tell you what's a lot of fun. I go out with my boys camping in the desert, and we take a bright hunting light like that. We don't hunt. But we ride around, we do what we call a rabbit roundup. And we go riding around out in the plains of the desert with the light there and we herd all the rabbits together and we play a game to see if we can jump off our motorbikes and catch a running rabbit with our bare hands. And we do. <laughs> then we let them go. Anyway, I'm sorry, I know that sounded mean. But it, the guys thought that was fun, didn't they? It says He's coming with the clouds. We already talked about that. How many people will see Him? Yeah. Is it just a few people that are ready or will everybody see Him when He's ready? So Jesus comes again. It'll be bright. Every eye will see Him. Not only will every eye see Him. I need a volunteer. All right, let me see. I'll get two again. I'll come down. I'm gonna, <laughs> All right. That's so why you come up here. That's, here you can, you can come on. You Now what's your name? Couldn't hear you. Annabelle. Annabelle and you're Enoch. Enoch, right? Enoch, see if you can find uh, something from the ocean in the treasure chest there. Okay. Now you know what this is? Yeah, I found this by accident driving once on an island. I won't tell you where. A and what do they say when you put your ear to a shell, what's supposed to happen? Can you hear the ocean? You do hear the ocean, yeah. You, you hear kind of an echo when you, when you listen to that, okay. You want to hear it? See if you hear something. 
kind of hear it humming a little bit, right? Okay, now, uh, I want you to plug your ears. Come on over here. No, I don't bite very hard. All right, this is not just an ordinary shell. Put, put your fingers in your ears. Did you hear that? All right, now cover both your ears again. You come over here. If she doesn't mind, you put, put your hands over her ears also. You get double coverage. It's called noise-canceling headphones. Did you hear that? All right, you know, not only will you see when Jesus comes, the Bible says you're going to hear when Jesus comes. You guys didn't know there was a trumpet also. All right, thank you very much. Let's give them a hand. Okay. Let's look at this next verse here. It says, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout. What? I wonder how loud. If we all shouted together at the same time, if I asked you to all say amen when I count to three, I wonder if they'd hear next door where the adults are meeting. All right, you got to, you got to do it one time. Shh, shh. When I say it, one time, I just want to hear, amen. I'll count to three, okay? Amen. And then you got to be real quiet afterward. Ready? Here, this is your chance. One, two, three. Amen. amen. <laughs> okay. That's as Pentecostal as we're going to be. So now, was that loud? Yes. Okay, shh. Yeah, settle down now. The Bible says the Lord is coming. Do you think you're louder than the Lord? No. When the Lord comes with a shout and with a trumpet, will people know? Yes. When it's as bright as lightning from side to side, everyone will know. Remember, when Jesus came the first time, he came as a baby. He came like what? A lamb. Quietly. Meekly. At night. In a manger. Almost nobody knew. When he comes a second time... He's coming like a lion, like a king, with a shout, with a trumpet, with light. It is not a secret. Now, why does the devil want people to think he's coming quietly? Because Satan is going to impersonate Jesus' second coming. If you know that Jesus is coming in the clouds, Satan's not going to impersonate that. If you know he's coming with lightning from the sky to sky, with a shout and all the angels... He won't be able to come. But you might be thinking, Pastor Doug, doesn't the Bible say that Jesus is coming like a thief? It does. Some people think he comes like a thief. He steals away all the saved people. And then life goes on for seven more years. But let's read what the Bible says when it says he's coming like a thief. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Now what happens on the day when the Lord comes? in which the heavens pass away with a great, there's that noise again, and the elements melt with fervent heat, and both the work, the earth and the works that are in it are burned up. Does it sound to you when Jesus comes like a thief, does it sound like life goes on? No. The whole world's burned up when he comes like a thief. So when people tell you Jesus is going to take some folks away secretly, the Bible doesn't teach that. You're not going to read about the second coming in the newspaper the next day. You're not going to have a friend call you on the phone and say, hey, did you hear? Or they're going to text you and say, did you catch that? What? Oh, Jesus just came. No. When he comes, the whole world will know. Who's going to be with Jesus when he comes? Matthew chapter 25. Let me read it to you. When the Son of Man comes in his glory. Now, these scriptures will all be in your lessons. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and how many angels? All the holy angels with him. You know, the Bible tells us that there were one or two angels at the resurrection. One angel threw away the stone. Two angels appeared to the ladies. But the power of that angel scared a bunch of guards. They fell down like they were dead from the glory of one angel. Can you imagine? You know, the Bible tells us that one angel of the Lord went out to the Assyrian army. One angel killed 185,000 enemies in one night. One angel. Can you imagine when the Lord comes with billions of angels, how bright that will be? 
it says he'll send his angels with the sound of a great trumpet there's that trumpet again and they'll gather together his elect from the four winds that means north, south, east, west from the four winds of heaven from one end of heaven to the other the Bible says when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire this is 2 Thessalonians 1 7 taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey what's going to happen to those that don't obey those angels are going to also come and take vengeance if you're not saved taking vengeance on those who do not obey our Lord Jesus Christ and so you need to be ready as I mentioned that one angel scared all of those soldiers at the resurrection Jesus said 1 Thessalonians 4 16 for the Lord himself Paul actually writes this for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trumpet of God and what else happens when he comes that's a resurrection everything is happening when he comes at one time the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive and if you're young when Jesus comes and you're alive you get a glorified body a young body we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds so you're going to get to go through the stars and the clouds to meet the Lord in the air that's his clouds of angels and thus we will always be with the Lord now tell me if it looks like it's a secret to you the Bible says one his coming is literal he left he was real he was talking to him the angel said he's coming the same way he left he was personal they knew him some people say Jesus came spiritually it's not just spiritual it's very physical he was visible he will be visible when he comes he left in the clouds he's coming in the clouds it was audible they could hear him speak when he left he's coming with a shout and a trumpet the Bible says and a roar it's physical the Bible says there's an earthquake when Jesus comes every island and mountain is going to be swallowed up and shaken it's going to be vitalizing there's a resurrection when he comes it's going to be glorious angels are full of the heavens are full of light and angels and glory it's like lightning and it's going to be climatic it's the great climax of history it's called the day of the Lord so if you hear these stories about Jesus coming secretly and snatching away a few people that's what the devil wants folks to think so they won't be ready when the real thing happens because Satan plans on impersonating Jesus coming you see many churches teach they believe Jesus is coming but they say yeah it's going to be secret rapture and I know this man and his wife's a Christian she believes that Jesus is coming secretly and the life is going to go on for seven more years and he'll get another chance well there is no second chance the devil wants people to think don't get ready now if all the Christians disappear then you'll know the Bible's true and then you get ready the devil's trying to trick a lot of folks that man says well if my wife disappears then I guess she's telling the truth then I'll get ready but you see it'll be too late then so the devil's trying to deceive a lot of the world even in the church about how he's coming we know he is coming he promised he'd come the first time as our sacrifice and he did didn't he let me tell you something just I think you'll find interesting God made Adam just about 6,000 years ago and then you've got 6,000 years approximately from the time of Adam to where we are when you look at the ages in the Bible then God says we're going to spend a thousand years living and reigning with Jesus during the millennium millennium means 1,000 years and then Peter says a day with the Lord is like a thousand years so it's like you've got Adam back here and you've got 1,000, 2,000 Abraham 3,000, 4,000 Jesus was born 5,000, 6,000 and then we have a thousand year Sabbath with the Lord it's 2,000 years from Adam to Abraham 2,000 years from Abraham to Jesus and it's probably pretty close to 2,000 years from Jesus first coming to his second coming we are living on Friday evening of the second coming his coming is very near and he's got a big plan for your life and he wants you to surrender your hearts to him so you can do his will for your life he won't force you you must invite him to come in so will everybody go with Jesus to heaven when he comes no. very sad but no most people don't go I wish it was the majority but Jesus said straight is the gate and narrow is the way 
that leads to life and few there be that find it. Broad is the gate and what broad is the way and wide is the gate that goes to destruction. A lot of people want to go down that road to destruction. Many there are. People, they don't want to, they're waiting. They say, oh, later I'll turn to Jesus or I want to do what my friends are going to do. You need to make your own decision. Jesus said that the wicked will declare for the rocks, they'll pray for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and hide them from the face of Him who sits on the throne. They're going to run from the glory of His coming. With the breath of His lips He will slay the wicked. Now, I kept my light up here because uh, I used to play a game when I lived in New York City. I, sometimes we had problems with cockroaches. They're all over the city. And I've been to some countries. Do cockroaches come out in the day or they come out in the night? night? And so my friends and I, we would sneak into a room at night and we'd turn on the lights and we'd see the cockroaches everywhere and we'd try to surround them. If we shined a light at them, they'd all run from the light. Sometimes we'd surround them. We'd, I don't recommend this, but we'd put a lighter fluid around them. We'd try and ring them in. And yeah, don't do this at home. But what happens at night if you shine a light in the summer up in the sky Cockroaches run from the light on the ground, but as you shine it in the sky, the moths will come to the light. Same light, but some are cockroaches and some are moths. When Jesus comes, the cockroaches are going to run and the moths are going to come. Are you going to want to be excited about Jesus coming? You're going to be a moth. You're going to go to the light. You'll be happy. Those who have sin in their hearts, they're going to run. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his works will be. Everyone's going to be judged when he comes. Now, what are some of the signs of Jesus coming that he gives us? I'm going to go through several signs here. Now, listen, you want to know how soon he's coming? No man knows the exact date of his coming. If someone says, I've got the date of his coming, I know the year of his coming, I'd stay away from that person. No, my battery's still on. I don't know what happened. That woke you up, huh? In such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. The Bible is very clear that nobody knows the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. Christ said when He sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to Him privately. They said, tell us, what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the world, the end of the age. And so the answer to that is, I'm going to give you several answers now. A, there'll be false prophets. Jesus calls them wolves in sheep's clothing. You cannot believe everybody out there that says they're a preacher. They're not all teaching from the Bible. So you need to be on your guard. Christ said there'll be many false prophets. They'll rise and they will deceive many. You know what an illusion is, an optical illusion? All right, I want you to look at what I've got on the screen here. You see that box with the intersecting lines? How many of you can see the black dots? Do you know there actually are no black dots up there? But if you stare at that long enough, you'll think that the white dots are surrounded by black dots, but they're not there. It's an optical illusion. Can the devil create illusions? You've got to be very careful what you watch on television, and what you watch on your phones or your iPads. Do you know how you hypnotize a person? Through the optic nerve, that's the eyes, and the auditory nerve, that's the ears. Through a certain rhythms and suggestions, the devil can hypnotize people. And so you got to be careful what you're watching because sometimes the devil can create illusions and he can deceive people. The Bible says there'll be many false Christs through history. There have been several people that said they were Jesus. I'll tell you a quick story. Jesus says, Matthew 24, if they say he's in the desert, go not forth. I lived in the desert in a cave by myself up in the mountains. Some of you heard my story, right? First night. I lived like that for about a year and a half. One day while I was in my cave yard doing something, a hiker came into my yard. He was a man about six feet tall. He had hair down to his shoulders. He was about 30 years old. 
He had a beard. He's a good-looking man. I said, hi. I thought he was just a hiker on the trail. I said, hi, what's your name? He said, I'm Jesus. I said, oh, you mean like Jesus? You know, I've met some people, from, I've got some Spanish friends, and they named their kids Jesus. But that's how you say Jesus. He said, no, no, I'm Jesus. Well, I had just been reading the Bible. I just had come to the Lord. I was a baby Christian. I said, you mean like you're saying that you're Jesus, Jesus? I said, yes. I said, uh, I was a little scared because I thought, I'm up here alone in the mountains with somebody that says they're Jesus. They're probably crazy. <laughs> and then I thought, he looks a little like Jesus, at least the pictures I see. I thought, well, if he is Jesus, I don't want to be rude because that would really be bad. <laughs> if I said, oh, Jesus, you're a liar. And he really was Jesus. I mean, I didn't know what to think. And, and so I said, but uh, <clears throat> I thought in the Bible it said that when you come, everybody's going to see you and it's going to be like lightning. He said, well, that's when I come for everybody in the world, but I'm coming for certain special people privately. I said, oh. And he seemed to know his Bible. Whenever I'd say something, he'd say, well, the Bible says this. About, and he was quoting and misquoting the Bible. I didn't know the Bible that well back then. And he stayed with me. And I thought, well, you know, this is going to be very interesting. He doesn't seem like he's going to hurt me. But he said he was Jesus, and so I stayed with him, and I talked to him about the Bible, and I asked him questions, but he stayed with me for three days. He ate all of my food. He didn't do any work and help me around the cave. So finally, I had to kick Jesus out and say, look, you got to go. <laughs> A few days later, I saw him down in town, and he had found someone that was following him around, this tall hippie. He said, oh, this is Jesus. I said, oh, no. And then a few days later, I saw him, and he was missing one of his teeth because he had gotten in a fight, and someone knocked out one of his teeth. And I thought, I feel so much better because I know Jesus has all of his teeth, and that for me was proof that it was not Jesus. <laughs> but this was one person who probably used too many drugs. He was not well. But there's going to be some people in the last days that are going to say they're Jesus. They're going to be very convincing. The devil can appear as an angel of light and deceive people. Answer B, Bible says not only will there be false Christ, there's going to be wars and disasters. Do we have war in the world today? Yes. Are there natural disasters? Yes. Even in America, we've had some terrible floods this year. There's different earthquakes that are happening. They've got volcanoes destroying. They've got mudslides. They're having famine and floods. And it seems like these things are happening more. Some of you have any little brothers or sisters? Yeah. Do any of you remember when mom was pregnant with little brother, little sister? Do you know what happens when a mom's going to have a baby? Of course, the baby starts to grow. She gets bad, and then she starts to walk a little funny. And then when, and sometimes she's got aches and pains, her back hurts. And, oh, sometimes she feels a contraction. She's the baby's kicking or something. There's little pains. But then one day she'll say to dad, ow, uh, you better get me to the doctor. This is really hurting. I'm having a contraction. And dad's driving real fast to get to the doctor. And she's going, ow. And they call the doctor from the car. And they say, my wife's in labor. Get ready. The doctor will say, how far apart are the contractions? Because as the pains get closer together and as they get more intense, soon you've got a baby. That's how it happens. <laughs> you know, the Bible talks about second coming that way. It says that as we get near... There have always been wars. There have always been rumors of wars. There have always been natural disasters. But as we get near the end, in the last century, we had two world wars. That never happened before. Now we have nuclear weapons. Now we're having terrible disasters like the tsunami where they had 250,000 people died. The earthquake in Haiti where I think it was like 300,000 people. They're just terrible tragedies that are happening in the world that, tell us that, that tells us that Jesus is coming soon. One of the other signs of Christ coming again, knowledge will increase. Oh, man. I got this cell phone. It's a really smart, smartphone. And I can't believe everything it does. Now, it's taken me a while to learn. But, I mean, I just press a button and I'll say, uh, Google, how many stars are in a galaxy? I did this today. How many stars are in a galaxy? 
there are 200 billion to 250 billion stars. I ask it any question in the world. It, it's like I've got all the knowledge. It tells me where I am. It's got a light on it. It's got a camera on it. It's got a video player on it. I can do a thousand different things with this. It's a little box. If I had the Apostle Paul here today and I showed him my smartphone, he'd think it was demon-possessed. <laughs> he would say, what's that? I mean, really think about it. Has knowledge increased a lot in the last generation? My grandfather was born in New York City at home by kerosene light. When he was born in New York City, they drove horses around New York City. Look at how much things have changed in one lifetime. You're living in one of the most exciting times in the world's history. The Bible says in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 4, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. For many will run to and fro, and knowledge will increase. People running to and fro. Are people traveling faster today than before? You know, a few years ago, if you wanted to get from New York to California, you had to go by foot or horseback, it could take you months. And then they started to get a train, and it would take you days. And you get a car, you could do it even quicker. Now you can hop on a plane. You know, the, the Boeing has just developed a plane that's going to go uh, about 3,000 miles an hour. People are going to be able to go from New York to London in two hours. It's just incredible what's happening with technology. Look at all the inventions in the last few years. In one century, airplane, automobile, radio, television, smartphone, computer, nuclear power, lasers, penicillin, solar panels, moon landing. Hearing aids, I need pretty soon. Pacemakers, <laughs> microwaves, DNA, air conditioning. I mean, all these things. The world has changed so much in one lifetime. You know, for me, one of the greatest proofs... Hey, listen, listen. You're going to want to get this. Some of the greatest proof that Jesus is coming soon is the next thing that Christ says here. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. You know right now, through the Internet, these programs are being watched all over the world. Through television, 3ABN's got satellites all over the world, that through um, radio, through the printed page, through missionaries, there's hardly a place. Mrs. Batchelor and I went with some of our media team that's here now. We went to New Guinea. 150,000 people came and we couldn't believe it. We thought, how did they know? They had smartphones. They were texting each other. Even on a fairly poor country like New Guinea, all over the place, people are hearing the message of the gospel. Another thing, sign of the end, Bible says selfishness would increase. Paul says, Second Timothy, now there's no selfishness in your family, right? Know this, that in the last days, this is 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, 2, and 4, men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure more than God. That's happening in the world today. Jesus said the love of many would grow cold because lawlessness abounds. People watch these killer video games, and then young people go out and get guns, and they shoot their friends at school, and they shoot teachers, and they, just for no reason. Because you know what the Bible says? When Christ... Christ said, when Jesus comes again, it will be like the days of Noah. You know what it says about the days of Noah? Violence. The world was full of violence. And people involved in a lot of senseless violence. More people die in gang fighting in Chicago than die overseas in the military from day to day. It says children would be disobedient to their parents. I know you obey your parents. Unthankful, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal. These are signs of the last days. So here's the important question. How do I get ready for Jesus coming? How many of you want to be ready? You want to know how to be ready? You can get ready tonight. Do any of you know that you're going to be alive in a week? You probably will, but you know, sometimes things happen. Life is a gift. And you need to make a decision to say, I'm not going to wait until I'm older. Today, Jesus said, when you hear his voice, 
you open the door of your heart. Christ said, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice, he's not only knocking, his voice, he's calling and opens the door, I will come in. You remember what we, we learned earlier? Does Jesus force his way in or do you need to invite him in? You need to invite him in. He wants you to open the door. And he says, if you open the door, as many as receive them, him, to them he gives power to become children of God, those who believe in his name. If you just, it's that simple. If you say, Lord, I am sorry for my sins. And you confess and repent of your sins. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Pray to him. Say, will you forgive me? He promises he will. The Bible says if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then he'll cleanse you from all. He promises to forgive you. You have a gift of everlasting life at that point. Now, Christ said he'd come back again. Can we believe him? You know, one of my favorite stories from history is about Sir Ernest Shackleton. He was a, a famous Arctic explorer from England, and he wanted to be the first one to take a team of men and completely cross the Antarctic, South Pole. And he ran an ad in an English paper, and it said, men wanted for a hazardous journey, low wages, bitter cold, long hours of complete darkness, safe return, doubtful. In other words, you may not survive. Honor and recognition in the event of success. And according to the story I heard, he was flooded with applications of young men that wanted to do something like that, risk their life for a noble cause. So he got a very careful crew together. And he made sure they were all well trained. And they took the ship called the Endurance and they went down to the South Pole. And as they began to get ready to cross the South Pole, the ship got trapped in ice. And the men all had to unload. And they, they couldn't go anywhere. There was no radios back then. They were stuck. They were marooned. And then soon the ship got crushed in the ice. So they took the lifeboats off. They had to paddle the lifeboats and take them to the nearest island because the Antarctic was just ice. They had to get off the ice. They took the gear and all that they could and they went to an island called Elephant Island. And they were stranded there. No one knew they were there. They were starving. It was winter. It was cold. They were wet. They were sick. And Shackleton thought, we're going to die if we stay here. I need to get help. So he took five or six men that were still well. This is actually a photograph they took that day. They took a photographer with them. They got in that little bitty boat that you see there. They crossed 800 miles of ocean. They had no GPS to go to the nearest whaling station where they knew there would be some other people. Shackleton told his men, said, I will come again. And he went and he risked his life and they made it to the whaling station. And even though he was hungry and sick and cold, he told the whaling boat, you've got to leave right now and I'm going with you because I promised them I would come back. They said, we'll go get them. We know where they are. You stay here, rest. He said, no, I promised I would come back. He got on the boat. He went back with them and he rescued all of his men. Is Jesus going to keep his promise? He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself. Jesus is definitely coming again. This world is definitely going to end. You can see it. The pollution, the overpopulation, the threat of war. Man keeps making nuclear weapons and history shows us man has never made a weapon he did not use. Now, I'm not trying to frighten you, but you need to be aware that this world is not going to last forever. And the Lord brought you here tonight or you're watching right now because he wants you to be ready. Jesus said, look, I want to prepare a place for you. But you must first give him a place in your heart. If you prepare a place for him in your heart, say, Lord, come into my heart. I'm going to open the door. Then you can take that journey through the stars. There's only two kinds of people when Jesus comes. What are they? Cockroaches and butterflies or moths. You get to make up your mind what you want to be. If you invite the Lord and he says, I'll make you a new creature. I'll give you power. I have a special, exciting plan. And you will have an amazing adventure with Jesus when you invite him into your heart. How many of you want to do that today? And be ready for his coming. Can I pray with you as we close? And I want to pray also with those who are watching. Let's just bow our heads, close our eyes for a moment, okay? Loving Father, we're so thankful for the promises that you made in your word that you will come back that you're going to transform us now, give us new hearts, 
that you'll forgive all of our sins, that you can give us peace and joy. You promise to be with us always, even to the end of the world. We don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen in the world if you're with us because we know we'll be ready. And Lord, we want to take that trip with you through the universe. We want to go to that kingdom you prepared. I pray, Lord, you'll bless each one of these young people. Help them to have that peace and that sense you're with them. Give them power to follow you and to love you. And I just pray you'll continue to bless these programs. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, friends. Now, I hope that you plan on being here for our next lesson. It's going to be talking about the law of the king. And we'd like to invite you to tune in. God bless, and you have a good evening. Amen.